all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back updates and information as it is hot in case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel you can go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news is dropping you will be the first to take it let's go down to the news proper i see the hot um <laughs> uh according to the prime minister of the Biafra republic government in exile mass simon eba he said i'm reading directly now don't touch the dial he said i gave Ibo's orders over 85 million palliatives in five months simon eba simon eba the prime minister of Biafra republic government in exile says he distributed over 85 million palliative to be france in the southeast south south region in nigeria from july to november 2023 the finland based lawyer and freedom fighter disclosed this on friday in a statement regarding the impact of the biafra republic government in exile liberation movement he said the move was to boost biafra's commitment to the actualization of the biafra referendum According to pictures and videos cited by journalists, a palliative distributed of food items and cash occurred across Southeast location from July to November 2023. He expressed that the palliative was extended to Hausa community in Bono State to show that Biafra liberation is not about hatred for other tribes in Nigeria. From July 2023, to November 2023, the Biafra Prime Minister, through the Biafra Republic government in exile and Biafra de facto government in exile in the homeland, has distributed palliatives worth over 85 million naira to Biafrans, both in the coastal and hinterland. The Biafra government also shared a palliative to a Hausa community in Bono State, showing exemplary leadership that Hausas are not the problem and many are with us in the struggle he said we want to make it clear that we have supported the house community in the north with palliative measures to show we have nothing against them said Marcy simon eba recall that the brgie under the leadership of mass simon eba has been vociferous in quest for the biafra referendum but consequently, a weak seat at home is observed in the southeast to demand the release of Nambekano and Biafra liberation. In July, the BROGIE observed a two week seat at home across the southeast region. After two weeks of historic seat at home, the Biafra government continues to touch the lives of Biafrans that Nigeria has destroyed. I choose the one. Post. But as it be, let's go. But from July 2023 to November 2023, the Biafra Prime Minister through the Biafra Republic government in exile and Biafra de facto government in the homeland. Uh, but when I don't see as it be, <laughs> uh, Mazi Simon Eba, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile, uh, don't come out to say uh, that according to him, that his government has been giving palliative uh, to Biafrans. And not only that these things we are giving to Biafrans, I was also given to the Hausa community to let them know that that Hausa people are not the problem. That the problem is just to get the freedom. Well, um, I think um, if everybody is still looking at things from that direction, which is very, very okay, because uh, when you are asking for your freedom, your friend is not your enemy. Now, you look at uh, you look at the issue of uh, USSR. That at a time, I also look at what is what is happening, what is happening in Russia. Now, some people will be asking, okay, uh, where is Eba going? That will be the question. But meanwhile. Let's go to another information as to the hot. Uh, I will still bring you back.
because as it dey be as it dey be for this matter you know be matter where we say i go carry my out chuck now make i leave it open remember say i don't tell you say i don't open our super chat uh, there you can support the work we are doing direct bam 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 if you are super chat what are going <laughs> don't touch the dial they say nigeria community where taps smell like gas line you get one community for nigeria uh, where the tap where they did they smell like gas line and for this um some river state of course you know that some part all part of river state and Biafra land but it be like say some people where they there uh, because of politics and have you make them survive uh anytime we ask them they're going to talk different thing but i survive and i be the matter you remember say after 1967 the 1970 civil war that took the life of a lot of their friends um uh, the Patak uh, people that live in the Patakot area side uh, took over every property that were owned by the Igbos then that was what happened during that time so and that has been a very big issue even uh, up on the to that time to now when the Igbo were given only 20 pounds each to survive but as it be the people where they live for this community where they produce gas water no good even self crops no they grow the again because uh the oil where we say they come up for ground you know they allow crops to grow and if you go for this community now this community where we say they get this oil and then they suffer house good house no they deal community no they road no deal you go to wonder yourself you say Maybe these people will be sent for their house. Now, mineral resources that from there if they come out. <laughs> but you go to ask what thing they happen. Why are those areas underdeveloped? But now the the government money they come out. Now why you go to look at the politics of this nation? I go to ask why. I go to ask why um people like MNK that came out and opened a lot of things. Why is he held? And Peter B in his wisdom, even yes, Peter B is one for uh, no matter anything, Peter B is one for there are some things he said. Uh, and for myself, I started saying that he reviewed a lot of things. He could have waited, let him get into power. But reviewing all those things uh, while he was doing campaign was a kind of threat, even to the government, even though it was able to gather people around him and the rest of them. Uh, both uh, all those um, uh, 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 interviews they went for and uh, 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 exposition they did. He reviewed a lot of things, which was not bad in its sense, but uh, comparing African politics, uh, you don't review such a thing because you do says uh, you are trying to kick out the other people's board and they have watched you. Bam, you get there, they say you go fire them. <laughs> That's how politics they be for this Obodo. I say government be gonna uh, make gonna they try to they look for waiting go benefit the people. They say Nigeria is suited to attract investment from climate funds. Okonjo Iwala. They say Nigeria they suited no Okonjo Iwala. Now they talk this one. Uh, Okonjo Iwala now you know they do African things again. No now world uh, a bank and up in the work with world something something like that. There will be Okonjo Iwala. Either world trade or something. I see the be and the kind of people where we say Nigeria means where we say if to say at them day for the economy now. Uh, during time where we say good luck, Jonathan Day for ah good luck, a better Jonathan. A uh, good luck and Yara Dua was one of the good presidents in Nigeria. I'm uh, how he managed the economy of Nigeria for like many years. Dollar was at the rate of one sixty. So uh, one uh, hundred dollar then was sixteen thousand. Yes, that was around um that was around twenty twenty uh, twenty eleven twenty twelve. Damn, dollar rate was was very much controlled without without uh, fluctuation. But as it be now, uh, the people will be say the day for the economy now. But if you wake up, they go tell you say dollar day for five hundred. You go wake up again, they say na 700 though. <laughs> then you go wake up again, they say you na 1000. 
You go ask them again, they say, and eh, I want 1,200. <laughs> Then you go here the other night, they say, dollar gain, don't gain power. Don't, dollar, you say how much? They say, 1,100. <laughs> you go reach the more, they say, dollar, don't gain power. Dollar, don't gain power. They say, say they say, 1,050. Then the next more, they say, dollar, don't fall your kata. <laughs> yeah, that's what it will be. And meanwhile, now here I go to wind down the cut in my people. Um, you know, get a CP way it never be before. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Uh, for our language, they, they call them Obunigwe. <laughs> uh, they say nah, about uh, more than seven to eight or ten Bombay, uh, where we say men of the NIG boys go through for the camp of the BLA, where they day for Mpara Imo. Uh, but as it be, <laughs> um, as na onye chie nebuluzo, eh, no guada fiaro. Man, I'm mad. Just when blue cheers, oh, I'm making it. I'm back a little more now. So, as it be, they say the men of the NIG detonate about ten to or more Bombay for where the base of the BLA soldiers did. This one they happen around Imo State, according to the information we reach me. They say the things scatter plenty things, but no casualties from the men of the BLA. No life was lost. Everybody was saved. It's just that the environment we are heavily affected uh, by what just happened uh, as the men of the NIG go there. See, may they go shake the Obodo uh, because of the information where they get uh, saying that the men of the uh, uh, BLA they stay. As the information they come, uh, we've not had uh, much from the men of the BLA or see them release their information so that we can pick it out from you. Well, we just got this one uh, to keep you. I uh, will keep you in touch as more information keep unfolding uh, for that attack. We will see uh, men of the NIG carry go for the place uh, where the BLA boys they stay. As the information go to unfold, we will make sure it go to reach for your table as they go. Armed rebel seized nearly. 50% of Myanmar, a military offensive junta, says nations on the brink of breaking apart. Myanmar's military, known as the Tatmado, is facing its biggest threat since it seized power two and a half years ago in a significant challenge. The military junta is battling ethnic insurgent groups to keep control of the country's border town. Different groups of well-armed rebels have joined forces for the first time and are gaining ground to restore democratic rule. The violence is causing people to flee to neighboring countries, bringing internal unrest to the world stage. After the takeover of the government by the Tat Mado in February 2021, coup, ethnic rebel group based mainly in Myanmar's peripheral region have organized armed opposition to the junta. On recent advances, rebels have seized nearly a hundred outposts of the north of the country, including several vital towns and critical trade routes. The offensive began last month in Shan State. Behind it is an alliance of three ethnic armies. They aim to overthrow the military junta and restore democratic rule. They again have encouraged resistance forces elsewhere in the country, seizing several towns. The military installed President Mia Tsui has warned that the country is in danger of breaking apart, saying that Myanmar would split into two various parts if the government did not effectively manage the incident happening in the border region. The rebels have seized over 8,000 square kilometers. These advances were made over a set of four offensives up till now. The first was on October 27 during Operation 1027, undertaken by three Brotherhood Alliance comprising three ethnic groups, the Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army, MDD, MNDAA, the Tang National Liberation Army, TNLA, and the Arakan Army, AA. The Northern Shan State, amongst the Brotherhood Alliance, were fighters from Rakhine State situated for the southwest of the country. This was followed by a second offensive, Operation 1007, undertaken on November 7. 
in which the Karini resistance forces captured at least two military bases in the southern Kaya state. Operation 10-1107 was launched to liberate Kaya state and support the resistance advance to Pumana near the Jontas Nepiot fortress. Last Monday, the Arakan army in the Rakia state undertook the most recent offensive. This is crucial because they were in fact in a ceasefire agreement with the Tatmado before launching the offensive. Finally, on the same day, the chain resistance, which had been relatively effective in fighting against the military junta, also seized other territories. Indications are that a situation where all the border areas are virtually in the hands of the resistance forces has emerged and the military, Tat Madu, seems to have lost control. Media reports suggest that approximately 447 junta personnel have given their weapons and surrendered in Northern Shan State, Kiachin, Rakia, and Mon State, and Sagain and Madu regions in the last few weeks. This critical phase will begin when the ethnic resistance forces challenge Myanmar heartland, especially north of Mandali. The question is whether do this success will encourage the Myanmar opposition to join the rebel forces, creating a complicated situation in the military government. Defense Minister for the Civilian Nationality Government, Yu Yimon, has hinted at the possibility by stating that resistance operations across the country are now being coordinated under a single nationwide strategy. As the fighting spreads, the humanitarian impact on the local population worsens. Even before this current offensive, there were already several million people displaced. These displacement camps have also become target for airstrike by Junta, which enjoys a military advantage in air power, air mobility. Reports indicate that the military government cannot send reinforcement to areas under attack, either in terms of retaking or assisting the forces already fighting the rebels. As the pro-democratic ethnic rebellion continues to take more and more places, the junta is expected to withdraw NEPDO and try to control the major centers like the financial capital, Yangon. The military government has arrested almost 20,000 people a figure which increased almost daily. China has strategic, strategic interest in Myanmar. They have a railway line project through Madeli and pipeline going to the Bay of Bengal. While China has been backing the military junta, there have been reports that the current ethnic offensive could have gone forward without support from Beijing. The most potent ethnic armed organization that controls an autonomous region with Myanmar, Northeastern Shan State, the United War State Army, enjoys significant materials and political support from Beijing. Although the War Army has said that it won't take sides in the ongoing fighting between the Myanmar regime and the ethnic alliance, it remains a significant armed supplier to the ethnic armed forces. So basically, even as Beijing is officially supporting the junta, it is also supplying arms to the ethnic rebel. The Chinese have good working relations with Aung San Suu Kyi's political party, the National League for Democrat Democracy, which, has, which was in power from 2015 to 2020. Its interest lies in a return of stability in Mama so that the energy project it has invested in, in can be safely resumed. Meanwhile, thousands of Myanmar nationals have crossed over into India to escape the intense fighting between the rebels and Myanmar military since last week. This include almost 47 Myanmar army officials who also crossed the international border and surrendered before the state police in the Indian border state of Mirozan, which shares a 514 kilometers long border with Myanmar Chinese state. These army personnel were later taken to the border town of More in Manipur, where they were handed over to Myanmar military officials. Hey, my people, now don't see I see they happen. Uh, Aya Denjo. Aya Denjo. Make a wind down the curtain here. And if now your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, share, comment. And also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you go be the first one. Thank you for listening.
God bless you.